last minute change of plans. I feel like if I am going to be talking about this, I should be able to be playing something that I could get my frustrations out a little more efficiently. Um, so, content warning for today, we're going to be talking about abusive relationships, specifically abusive friendship. Before I get too far into it, names will be changed. Uh, I'm not going to out people intentionally. And unless you're a very specific group of people, like those who know me personally, I'm not going to confirm whether or not a story is about one person or another. More than likely, those who know me personally, they're going to be around 70% sure who did what. Because I've become much more open to them about my issue. So without much more delay, let's just get into some uh, bot training. I, I want to do something that's kind of chill, don't have to focus, and we don't have to worry about people bitching at me the entire time in chat. Far is out of the question, given the fact that they're just the bots. Well, are aim bots. There's nothing else I can say about that. Okay, let's play a little bit of opera. Turn down my headset so I can actually hear myself talk. This feels off having my screen the way it is right now. By the way, disclaimer, I'm not that great at this game. I'm not. So, honestly, the main reason why I want to talk about abusive friendships specifically is... Is that almost no one talks about friends being abusive. And no one really acknowledges that a friend can keep you kind of trapped in an abusive friendship. People always think, think well, you can just leave at any time. Jeez. Like, really hate how Windows does that. Hey, Trio. Okay, might as well heal. One of my longest friendship I had before my wife was about 13 years long. And it took me pretty much the entire time for me to figure out whether or not they are abused. That was a waste of ability, but oh well. If people want to get butt hurt about this, they can go to com. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna stop missing my shots, I promise. What the fuck is that? So, this friendship I didn't realize was abusive because of two major things. One, toxic masculinity, and two, this person was manipulative as all hell. They will deny to the fucking grave, too, because... Insert excuse. And... A quick way to put it is that I... We helped each other out a lot during 
like our formative years, um, like fifth grade onwards, even past graduation. And it was, what, maybe three years ago that it ended? Around 2019 it ended, I think. No. 2019. It's, it'll be about two years in October. I don't know why I'm healing during that. Oh well, I'm, I'm distracted. I could accept that. But he... thing that they would do was they would push off a lot of their insecurities on enemies, whether it's about their gender, their sexuality, their family or personal confidence, whatever. It didn't matter to them. They'd push it off onto me. And a lot of that involved gaslighting to the point where they'd say, oh my uh, girlfriend isn't real. They're really a guy. You're not actually straight, that's a beard, this, that, the other. And it was horseshit. It really was. And I feel... I almost feel like guys become more of a victim during abusive relationships because... They're... I can see how it's even. It's probably even. But... With guys... They're... A lot of us are stuck in the mentality of, if we don't like it, man up. If we don't like it, just tell them to fuck off, do this, do that. All this macho nonsense that really doesn't fucking help. And ultimately it hurts more than anything else. We don't accept the fact that friends are mean or abusive because because we don't accept the fact that there is a limit of what is acceptable. There is a very fine line between being playful and being a right cunt. I have a weak chest because of asthma and a number of other birth defects. And this friend, I'm just going to call them Jay. This friend, Jay, would um, they punch me square in the chest for literally no fucking reason. They would drop me to my knees gasping for air for no reason. Other than they wanted to. And I didn't think that was abusive because I thought that was guys being guys. All that lovely bullshit. I'm dead. Fucking knew it. Hang on. Drinking and being frustrated is not good for one's body heat, especially when they're, I'd say, about 10 inches away from their PC's exhaust fan. And I, as a guy, as someone that age and someone who was relatively unsupervised during this shit, I had no idea it was harmful. I have no idea it was bad and no idea how much it was going to starve me. Because how could I know? I had no one to tell me, and I had... People who are abused tend to fall back into abusive relationships. Because it's what's familiar to them. It's what they know. It's what they view as normal. That's not healthy. No, 
don't know how I missed all that, but oh well, here comes the grenades. Do I have anyone to combo off of? No. Alting. And that's it. That's play of the game. <laughs> uh, this is why I need to play something a little more violent. I thought chill was going to be the way to go, but I feel much more confident talking about it while playing this. Even if my gameplay sucks. <laughs> One of the more common things I've seen guys victim to is isn't even physical abuse because he guys are more likely to beat someone else's ass if they're being physically abused than anything else if someone's like oh they're bullying me it's just man up grow up it doesn't matter if they're eight years old they're still told to fucking man up because of whatever stupid reason Oh, that bitch. This is about as thrilling as a lot of my streams are. <laughs> I'm kidding, I know. I know for a fact there are people who are very, very much enjoying my content. Alright, so... Statistically, they're more likely to come out that way. So if I use my headphones, I can tell where they're coming from. <laughs> and it what most guys are victim to is the emotional and mental abuse the manipulation of it because we don't have the more common support networks that is talk to me talk to me and I will help you most guys don't have the concept of you deserve this it's always treat it with violence which really is horseshit as most of us know and I'm not saying these things don't happen to women I'm absolutely not saying that this is what I experience and this is exclusively what I personally have had happen to me and seen happen to others. I know for a fact other people I love and care about were abused, were gaslit, were manipulated. I'm not denying that they were. Just my perspective it seems men are significantly less likely to get help for the non-physical aspect. Even if they are physically abused, there's still a damn good chance they're going to say man up and punch them back. Doesn't matter how big the guy is or how small they are. It's the same brainless shit. I'm gonna keep playing my little Aussie crackhead. I'm having fun with him. Alright, 
I, I think the biggest thing that could help most guys during abusive relationships would simply be assuring them from a very young age. I'm talking like toddler and up, say, you don't deserve to be hit, you don't deserve people yelling at you, and just, a lot of it is having the parents and other adults apologize when they fuck up. I got sniped. <laughs> I should get back on topic. Um, it was... I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Jay was a very problematic child. I'm not gonna deny that. They... They were absolutely a little fucking shit. And I'm not going to say they deserve what happened to them, because no one deserves to be mistreated. It'd be hypocritical for me to say otherwise. That isn't just, like, me trying to be a content creator or anything. It's what I genuinely believe. It doesn't matter how much of a shitty person you are. At the end of the day, nobody deserves to be mistreated. No one deserves to be. I should probably get healed. I'm also going to say this, those who know my Twitter, if something's going on, even if I don't get to you immediately, I will get to you when I'm in the right state of mind, if someone's mistreating you. If you just want to vent, I will keep everything you say confidential and anonymous. The only person who ever has an off chance of speaking or knowing about it is my fiance, and even then, she doesn't spread rumors or anything. Hell, her Twitter is private. All her Twitters are private. So you don't, you don't have to worry about anyone else seeing what you're saying or worrying about a situation getting worse just by talking to me. My only request is that if you want it to be absolutely anonymous, you want it to just end there, or if you don't want feedback, you just want to vent, please say so at the beginning. Just because, as someone with ADHD and autism, I tend to act first then think later. And that doesn't excuse my behavior, it doesn't. I'm just saying it's... It's something I'm guilty of. Alright. Three. One. Go. thing with Jay and I, I'm sorry about the long breaks between stories I kind of need them because I don't want to end up having a full breakdown while trying to be light and informative and I know especially Tria I know you're going to say don't worry about that it's more that I want to it's a promise to myself once this is over once I'm off stream I'll let everything out if I need to but It's the big thing about Jay is that it was a combination of a lot of abuse happening at the same time. The abuse that was a, that I guess you would say caused my DID. 
I don't know the right word for that. But the abuse that caused it started from the age of around seven or eight till I was 13. We're talking 2005 when I was 11 that they was regularly active in my life. And it obviously was horrible because I was dealing with abuse from them, from abuse of original abuser, and just, I don't want to write it off because it's not healthy, but at the same time, this is something, this is something personally I've decided, what hap, like, what happened between me and my siblings? I don't. I don't view that as what would be considered unusual, at least by American standards. My family agrees that was bullshit. How far it went, but at the same time, knowing what I know now, knowing what I know about what happened to my siblings, about what was going on in the household, what was going on other households because well those who didn't know my parents were divorced by the time I was around one or two knowing all of those little factors kind of write it off with my sibling simply because well you know what they went through it still sucks it's not okay it is never okay but I've forgiven my sibling We've already talked about it, and it's... It's done. We have a relatively healthy relationship now. Alright. But with... with um the shit that happened with Jay it's there's really no wiggle room of if that was acceptable or not because it was really trash you don't beat your friends you don't gaslight them you don't manipulate them you don't you don't blame them for every little fucking thing that you do that fucks over your family they I guess to set the standard for this, um, one thing Jay would regularly do, that they had, like, frozen steaks and shit in the freezer for family dinner night. Like, special events, birthdays, whatever. And what they would do is that they would take them, cook them, for me and Jay only, then say, I was the one that asked for it, I'm the one that is at fault for them being eaten. Which is fucking trash. And that's just setting the standard for the everyday stuff. He has to say, his family fucking loved me just because they saw how I was. That I was polite, that I was respectful, that I was just... I was a good kid. That simple. I was a good kid, and I just have a lot of fucking issues. A big part of working past that was just realizing or accepting the fact that it was a form of abuse. The first step getting better is accepting the fact that something is abuse, accepting the fact that it is unhealthy, and accepting the fact that it needs to change or you need to get out of there. And it's always easier said than done. I assure you, it is almost always easier said than done. With certain people, 
it's as simple as for certain people like online friends it's as simple as block or delete block and it's over some people it's that easy then you get the crazier people who make new accounts do this do that but there's other ones like in-person ones especially for those who are in school who can't really escape I've seen a few like that, I just never really put two and two together, you know? And... Another major issue that I've... that I remember now is... just... a lot of little things that they would do that was fucked up. A lot of very, very small things that just kind of built up. Okay. Regens once every four seconds. Not every eight. We're coming out. What is this? Huh. That went a little smoother. Alright, let's do that. They'll destroy that. I'll know which door they're coming out of. of a bitch. <laughs> uh, the gaslighting is something that too many kids are not taught about. Many of us are told to ignore that it's normal, whatever. I missed that teleporter completely. And that is just what friends do. It's not, not what friends do. Really fucking not. What the fuck? <laughs> it could be simple things. Gaslighting could be simple things like, uh, like taking someone's phone away, hiding it somewhere, just placing things intentionally, then lying about you misplacing them. Like, and there's people who say, well, it's just a prank. The difference between a prank of plucking around with someone's stuff is one, knowing whether or not how it's an evasion of privacy if you go through someone's stuff, no matter what. I'm sure we can all accept that fact. But the major thing of when a prank ends is whether or not you apologize, whether or not you give that thing back. Just these small things that people don't seem to fucking Alright, that was actually pretty fucking clean. <laughs> and if you're ever 
this is coming from an autistic person, so you... I want to make sure it's known that this is the most important part. If you are unsure of whether or not they view it as a joke, or if it's harmless or whatever, fucking ask. That's the most important thing, is to fucking ask. There is really no point in not asking if you fucked up. Own up to it. Be... Be... Mature. There's such thing as growing up too fast, I agree, but... It's never too early to understand or learn how to be a decent person. You don't need to be some philanthropist, some charitable deity for your age ask talk communicate You're, you may not be an adult yet but it's never too early to learn whether or not you need to ask for forgiveness or if you need to make sure you didn't hurt someone and if you're already an adult you need to learn pretty fast you being a victim or having mental illness is never an excuse for acting like a shitty person. Never an excuse. There's really no reason for you to just be a dick for the sake of being a dick. I've been drunk, I've had friends who are drunk, and Yet, even when we are drunk at our mentally lowest, we still have the capacity for compassion, for understanding that we fucked up and hurt someone. Now, there are sociopaths, psychopaths, and people who struggle, or neurodivergents who struggle with social cues, but that's why it's important to ask. It is always appropriate to ask if you hurt someone. Make it known that you want to know if you fucked up. Make it known that you want to be a better person. Make it known that at the end of the day, you're trying your best to I don't want to say productive member of society because fuck that mentality. Make it known that you want to be just better. There is no cap on how much of a good person you can be. And frankly, the whole fuck them mentality when it comes to being a dick is really just selfish and childish. It really is. Oh, I think it's stupid to say it's childish because... I know children as young as five who are more mature than that. Who are old enough to say sorry, who are old enough to make sure that they didn't hurt someone. And I... I know my channel has very little reach. I know my content has very little reach and it's likely I'm not going to be a big name. I know that. But my goal is to try to help the world be better a little bit, bit by bit, day by day, person to person. That's it. Never going to have the reach of like Markiplier or whatever. I'm never going to have that kind of reach. I accept that. I at least want to help make one person better so they can help make one person better. Okay, that was kind of horseshit. I want... If I can help one person just 
grow up and help learn about themselves. And growing up isn't just being the bigger person, it's knowing when to step away. It's knowing when it's the it's knowing when to put yourself first, knowing when to be the person that your younger self needed. That's what growing up to me is. It's being the person you needed yesterday, or last year, or ten years ago. It's growing up no what you need. What you need the kind of support you need because there's someone else out there who needs it. And the reason why I'm stepping away from my personal illness for the get to know Ziggy, this get to know Ziggy section is because I don't want to overload people with this is what I go through and make them think I'm trying to get attention for me or to pity me or whatever. My goal in life is to help people bit by bit. Not just me. Because I know there's others out there that need this kind of support, need this kind of message of you deserve better, you deserve safety, you deserve positivity. Yeah, there's shit people in the world, but there's a lot of reasons why people become shit people. There really is. It could be, and this is just because it is a common. Um, this is a common thing from my experience. It could be the fact that they're closeted gay, closeted trans. It's the fact that they're hiding something and feel like they can't be themselves. It could be something like, oh, their uh, dad's abusive or they themselves have abusive friends. It could be a grand number of reasons why they're a shit person. And it really blows... The solution for all that really boils down to being a better person, being a politer person, because we all deserve to have better, politer, supportive people in our lives. Every single one of us does. We goofed. <laughs> we forgot the point. Damn it. <laughs> Why did that scare me so much? It's a fucking Sombra. Granted, she could melt me in like 25 seconds, but still. Let me farm up some alt. Even if I can't help you, maybe, maybe I'll make you curious about someone else. Maybe I'll make you interested in something. Maybe. What I say causes you to think, hey, I might have been a victim of abuse, or hey, I might have this disorder, I show these symptoms. Good enough. And my hope is just, it's not be the person that changes the world. It's be the person to help someone else. That's it. Sorry dude, we're not on YouTube right now. We're on Twitch. Joke about that guy's username. But my my goal will always be educate to help. That's it. And I would love the idea of being able to make money off of this, make a living off of helping others out of being able to do Twitch all day. I would love the opportunity to get home, help those at home, and to just do more research, do more work, be more comfortable. I 
I've had to deal with that too, Tria. Um, we... Fuck, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna run around a sound bar. Bro, I've been watching a lot of Crit Crab, and that shit happens all the fucking time in those stories. For those who don't know, Crit Crab is a YouTuber Redditor. Redditor? They're, I'm gonna assume Redditor because they do a lot of Reddit stories. But they read a lot of stories of, like, uh, RP, tabletop RPG horror stories where shit goes foobar, where there's abuse of DMs, abuse of players, all this shit. And, honestly, this kind of, I know it's going to sound kind of shitty, but listening to those stories make me feel more confident as a DM, as just, it makes me feel more comfortable in my hobby. And... It hurts, too. especially if you're you're an abuse victim and you see someone else being abused by that same person. Like, it sucks seeing your abuser abusing someone else, especially when it comes to abuse of friendships. There's a fucking bastion up there. Oh! Priya, I know your pain. And Zal... I want to approach this appropriately because I know you're dealing with a lot of mental health issues. You're not a bad DM. You're too critical on yourself. That's how I feel. Now, do I believe that you're a better player than DM? Yeah, but that's because I love the chaos you bring. I love... You bring a good balance of chaos and order. It's... It's... Honestly helpful. Then again... I prefer being a DM just because I love being a showman. I love... Not just the attention, but being able to entertain people. I love that. I'm extremely empathetic, so I love the idea of seeing that I make someone else happy. I, it's honestly a great, I sixty percent. Wow, nine kills with sixty percent. I guess it did go pretty fast. I love DMing and writing because I use, especially for some of my more horror aspects, I use those as an outlet for my disability. I, <laughs> I add in monsters, I add in little stories, nightmares. I, I love writing because it helps me, it takes my... 
It takes my symptoms, it takes my hallucinations, it takes my nightmares, makes it into something I control. I wrote the story, so it's mine to control. I decide what happens next. That's how I am. I drank that beer a little faster than I thought. It's still a little in there, but I still drank it faster than I thought. Ev Rhea, Evil Plan of Evil was my greatest thing to ever come out of my hallucination. And I know for a fact Zal enjoyed my Evil Plan of Evil. Hell, most of us agree that was the best session we've had so far. Okay, so they're gonna come out that door. One. The fuck out of there. There's just so much about D&D that I love. Nymphia's had to ooh, take a back step and realize that enabling me was not a great idea when it comes to adding literal god-level dragons to Barovia. You had to take a step back and convince me not to add Giratina from Pokemon into Barovia. I still gotta figure out how we're going to transition everything, but I'm not, I got a few sessions before I have to worry about Castle Ravenloft. I thought Torpitori couldn't target that. Oh well. <laughs> uh, hang on, gotta mute for a second. Alright, and we're back. Uh, Tria, if you... If you want, you and I could take a look at the, uh, Bloodborne... Uh, that Bloodborne 
monster manual. I'll do my best to be nicer to myself. I'm getting my ass melted. Oh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I highly doubt I'm gonna go into I don't think I'm gonna go into quick play today just because well I don't think I'm the right uh, mental space to be that patient But, nah. If I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. If I even just swap over to RuneScape and do quests, I don't know. But, every single one of us deserves a better life. Every single one of us deserves to be happier, to feel healthier, to just know when something is abusive and to be able to get the help that we deserve. Every single one of us deserves that right. Every single one of us deserves just that chance to be able to be better, to do better, to have better. Ooh, juice. Why do I smell food? Oh, damn it. Oh, cookie. All I have is Oreo. I know. But I know you'd let me have a couple if I really want. They're a, love, they're a loving wife. Do you feel like there's anything else I should bring up about uh, Jay? Other than the shit that they did to their ex? Because I feel like I shouldn't be putting their shit out there. And I feel like the shit that happened during the actual D&D game should go into a D&D &D horror story rather than in this. <laughs> that go to the trash can is just the state of U.S. politics as a whole. out of it. That is a good thing to talk about. Because it took you Scotty uh, Mama Bear and it took a lot of you to get me to accept that I need out. That it was abusive that I absolutely need to get out of that relationship before it hurt me more. Ready. The oh. I ended up. It was around the spring when I realized things were that happened. When is what happens that October was the last time I saw them, and then it was springtime when we finally said that, you know what, fuck you, enough is enough. 
Uh, the balance is a bit different. It's the current patch is more uh, support heavy. Like if you want to carry, you need a decent support. And it they nerf tanks, buff DPS, and drastically put more focus on all of your survivability coming from your uh, support line. Would I recommend playing this now? If you're on the edge, I would say no. If you haven't bought the game and you're on the edge, I would say no right now. Because they're trying to figure some shit out. That was some shit. I would say don't get it right now if you haven't already gotten it. That hooked like it shouldn't have hit. That hooked looked like it shouldn't have hit. I, pro I reprocessed what I said. But. If you already have it, you already down. Or you already. I can play it for free. I say absolutely try it again. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I was on the fence of doing that too. But the reason why I did it is that. Well, I already had the fucking game. They're not getting any more money out of me. That was my whole thing. But, I will say... That entire meta from there is gone. Um... Goat's death ball is obliterated. And, obviously, with a lot of these games, I'm gonna say it's always more fun with friends. Even if you just play training or whatever, it's more fun with friends. Because right now, that's all I'm doing is training. How the relationship with Jay actually ended was... As I said, it happened in spring. Spring is a very unstable time of year for me. I, they, content warning, uh, self-harm. What happened is that they were having a breakdown. Being the person I am, I try to be there for those who are struggling, those who have breakdowns, those who need help, all that. Oh! I try to be the supportive, loving, dad friend. Mission ain't over yet. And, yeah. And they knew that and they manipulated me using that a lot. I'm out of here. So, what had happened is that they had a breakdown and they talked about how they cut themselves again. They then, but I didn't reply because I think I was in the middle of a game or something. I think I was in the middle of a match and I didn't see the message. They sent me, no, I was at work. They sent me a picture of their cut, which was a deep cut on the leg. And there was you know, given details of, like, how far away from the artery they were. And I can't handle real gore. I cannot. That triggered me, sent me down a... Sent me down a very dangerous episode. And, well... My solution was... I can't reply to this responsibly until I'm in a better headspace. So I didn't reply. They started spamming my phone while I was asleep. So I didn't read any of that. They called me a couple times. Didn't answer those. And I made it clear in the past that I, I don't answer for whatever reason. 
it's because I need that little bit of a break. I need time for myself. We went over to another friend's house that night just to hang out, I think. We were just, we wanted to play Just Dance. So, Symphius was playing Just Dance, and I was just sitting there vibing. I get a call from Jay, and I start, I have another episode. I just start freaking out and crying. The other friend picks it up, talks to them, says, hey, they're having, er, hey, John's having a really hard time right now. Could you just give him a couple days to, pros to process everything?